Hill again starting his player lock series, our uh, second installment of the series. And today I'm going to show you guys what I talked about in my last video and give you a quick synopsis of what I'm going to decide to do today. So, as you can see, I'm starting on the first managed roster here of the Baltimore Orioles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cipher through all the positions here at random and stop at a completely random point like that, for example. And whatever position I decide to land on is the position that I'm going to then rifle through all 30 major league teams to eventually find. And then I will find whoever's the top rated player at that position and use them for my player lock series today. So, pretty interesting thing that I like doing, and it um, keeps me interested now that I've had MLB 16 the show for over a year now. Uh, it keeps things a little interesting, keeps a little nimble, so I'm going to start doing that right now. Alright, I'm going to just completely do this at random here. going to stop in 3, 2, 1. Alright, center fielder's good position, good position. Really didn't want to do another pitcher today, so uh, yeah, that's a uh, center field, really good position to start out with. And see if I rifle through this and I try to go too fast, you see it goes from thing to thing, so yeah, so what I might have to do is something like this possibly. So it was never like this in any other games, or I could just go like this, but it's not nearly as fast as I'd want it to go through, so I think I'm just going to do this at random. Just keep going like this, uh, completely all over the place, in three, two, one. And the Jacoby Ellsbury of the New York Yankees, very, uh, very intriguing player, actually. Jacoby Ellsbury can actually do a lot of things with Ellsbury, as you can see, almost an MVP winner in 2011. Very, very good season. Hasn't had a really great season like that since, but Ellsbury is still a hell of a player. So, um, let's see if I can, uh, see if I can do anything with that. So, alright, Jacoby Ellsbury is my man for today. So, I'm going to go over my franchise thing, hit new. I already, uh, did a roster upload, so I'm just going to stick to it with my current roster. Alright, going to do just like what I did with the whole John Gray thing. Uh, I'm gonna have to remind myself to save this later on. Okay, Ellsbury's late enough. I'm not gonna tw not gonna rock the boat with that one. Gonna leave that as is. Gonna check my settings really quick. Gameplay options, all stars, sounds good. Now presentation options. What I'm gonna do? Audio options. Um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do here? Audio presents. Headphones. Hello and I'm just... welcome to MLB The Show 16. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Hello. See, baseball. I'm just going to turn all of these. I'm just going to turn Hello, baseball fans. all of I'm these Steve guys Lyons, down, just so I can start MLB to focus on my own broadcasting a little bit. Because my past couple of videos Hello, has just been overshadowed. If it's either Steve Kellogg, and, uh, Clark Clark Kellogg, or Steve Kerr in NBA 15, Hi, I'm Justin or Vaskersian, and Lyons, Karos, and Allegri in uh, in this game. So, let's see, I'm going to keep all this music stuff, the PA guys, sounds good to me, uh, let's see if that stayed, alright it did, just want to make sure, coming out of my headphones, that should be a good setting to do, experienced, alright yeah, apply changes, looks good, got everything going, so yeah, and I'm going to have a tough matchup in hand against Dallas Keuchel and the Houston Astros. On opening day, and if you guys remember this, um, you don't see it here, but you see it at the bottom of the last screen. You still hit the R2 button on your PS4, uh, and that's how you lock a certain player. You can still move him around any part of the lineup if you choose, but Ellsbury is naturally a leadoff hitter, and I like having him in this spot. Don't really like the three uh, three straight lefties here against um, against Keiko, so Max is going to bother me, so I'm going to change that around uh, a little bit. I'm still going to want McCann. DHing here. Just in case he can run into one short portion right field for the Yankees, so you never know with that. Uh Aaron Judge. I'd like to hit here. Uh God, the Yankees have so many left handed hitters, it's ridiculous. Uh yeah, I guess I'll just keep this the right the way it is. So here we go. All right. 
right, here we go. Opening day 2016 at the new Yankee Stadium. Opened back in 2009. We'll have Dallas Keuchel, 2015 Cy Young Award winner, against Masahiro Tanaka of the New York Yankees. But then again, that is not going to be the primary focus, again, of this player lock series. The point of the player lock is to focus specifically on the one player that I have chosen for my player lock, and that will be Jacoby Ellsbury. So you'll be seeing nothing but him, whether it's defensive plays in center field or him coming up offensively to hit. And just a quick synopsis of the Yankees 2015 season. 16th in the MLB in ERA, 6th in saves, 12th in walks, and 26th and home runs allowed. And this is a man who does not give up too many home runs in Masahiro Tanaka and Dallas the Beard Keuchel in the Astros bullpen. So we're about to get this underway here. And you can see A.J. Hinch, very young skipper for the Houston Astros, very young and talented team, and Yulioski Girl Yao. Uh, if you do have MLB 16 in the show, you're going to have to get uh, some sort of either new live roster update or a custom roster, which is what I am using, uh, in order to have Gurriel on your roster since he was not actually a part of a uh, major league team until July of 2016. But the second out of the 2016 season will fall into the hands of me, Jacoby Ellsbury. And I will also get the first cut of the Yankee season for 2016 as well. Pretty cool Center thing here. Fielder, so there you go. You can hear Jacoby Ellsbury's name being announced. And Dallas Keuchel, 2015 Cy Young Award winner, especially against lefties, was not too favorable. Um, first pitch, rolling slaughter. I could have probably had a good hack at right there. Uh, he doesn't throw hard. He locates. He changes his pitches very well. Up, up down, uh, in and out. Really uh, Keuchel's forte, I guess you could say. And I really was late on that one. Really could have turned and burned on that uh, two-seamer inside. So now I got to protect that one, too. Right there. Turned right at the mini, mini, mini second, second baseman, Jose Altuve. From the first out of the inning. Gardner. As you can see, that ball was a screaming Mimi right at Altuve. So it's good, though, hitting the ball hard, hitting the ball hard. I usually don't get too upset as long as I hit the ball hard. If you make it out, hit the ball hard at somebody. I mean, that's baseball. It's going to happen. Then you're going to have some broken bat looping singles in the center field that should have been outs but turn out to be base hits. So that's just the way the game goes, unfortunately. As I will record my second out with Ellsbury, which will coincidentally end the second inning. And as you can see, this jumps around, jumps around, jumps around, only to specific instances in where Ellsbury is involved. Primarily, as you can see, you know, when he's hitting or when he's in the field. And if I manage to get on base in today's game, I'll show you a hopefully a little a pretty good display of uh, that's a questionable pitch, but okay. How about Ellsbury's speed on the base pads? That is, if I get on base here. Back up the middle. I might have no wish come true. Correa gets a glove on it, but with Ellsbury's speed, will not get out for an infield single. And we can watch a quick little replay of this. Perhaps, maybe, maybe so. No, no. Okay, I guess my uh, infield chopper was not nearly good enough for a replay. But Brett Gardner, who recorded the first Yankees hit of 2016, is up here with the 2-2 count, and I'm gonna go regardless. Let's see, and that'll be right in the right center field. Perfect time for the hit and run, and I'm gonna go for it. I'm going for it. I'm getting waved around. Correa store to the plate is late, and this ball game is tied. At a run apiece on the beautifully placed hit and run by the combination of Brett Gardner and Jacoby Ellsbury. As Gardner got a pitch right down Broadway and Ellsbury read that beautifully. Did not hold up whatsoever. Turned on the Jets and came all the way around from first to score. And now as you can see, fast forward to the top of the fourth where the Yankees apparently tacked on another run. Since when I scored with Ellsbury to make it 2-1. to one, and now Tanaka's got a 2-2 count on George Springer. As that ball is smacked into the right center field gap. Going to have to get to the wall and cut this one off. Hopefully prevent this run from scoring. And it will. Second and third one out. Still nothing to be happy about. But let's hope Tanaka can get out of this. And he did. Wow. Pulled a rabbit out of his hat there in the fourth. He managed to get out of that. But now we're fast forwarding, of course, to the fifth. With Alex Bregman up at the plate. Again, need a roster update, some sort of live roster update in order to acquire Alex Bregman. 
I see he's hit a ball to medium deep depth in a, the right center field alley, but I have Ellsbury there with fantastic speed. Always has, always will. For the second out of the fifth inning. And as you can see, a replay, getting a good jump on the ball, always a key thing, especially in the outfield. Playing the outfield in this game just makes it actually an enjoyable position to play now with the way that the ball comes off of the bat. You can see the trajectory of the ball. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing that I uh, that I enjoy doing, especially with the outfield. And as you can see, Tanaka has uh, blown at the Yankees 2-1 lead. Now we're down 32 here in the home half of the fifth. As that's a ball that I, I really got to stop taking the first pitch, man. That's right there. I could have done a lot with that. As I am looking to somehow get on base against Keuchel. Is another pitch at the knees. That's Keuchel's, Keuchel's for today. But now I got to protect the plate and I cannot do that I was a slider in the zone I pulled off a little too early on that and I will go down on strikes for the first time tonight and look at this fast forward into the seventh inning all tied up with the bases loaded and one out this ball is going to come somewhere near me hopefully a little blooper and that will not be the case that is stung into the right center field gap and I will not be able to make that play look at all the way to the wall that'll just score only one however to make it a 5-4 game. Did not want to take the risk of diving because that would have possibly scored all three. Better to just let the run score and look at that. We get out of it only down by one. Great job by whoever was pitching right there. And now Dallas Keuchel is out of the game as I am up here with one out in the bottom of the seventh against Tony Sip, I believe. Tony Sip, longtime lefty. Seems like he's been around forever. As I took a really good hack right there, that fastball right there. Could have done a lot with that one. Kind of been neutralized today, unfortunately. Me being a lefty-lefty. Never too favorable. You'll never hear too many lefties. You'll never see too many lefties on uh, MLB 16 the show. That will have favorable uh, attributes against the left-handed pitchers. You just don't see that. Uh, Joe Maurer is one of the few that I can think of. Because he can, uh, he can hit just about any type of pitcher in any situation. As I will go down on strikes again. Hopefully this will not be my last at-bat. Just blew that ball by me. As now it is 8 to 5, and the Astros are starting to pull away here in the top of the ninth inning. As Colby Rasmus will hit one the other way, he will hit it against the shift. I'll try to make a diving catch here, and again, it is out of my reach. Unfortunately, that will get all the way to the wall, and this will cost me a three bagger with one out in the top of the ninth inning as the Astros look to add some insurance here. And they do not manage to do that, but with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Um, Astros closer Ken Giles here. Probably, get, even though I need to get on this, probably going to look for a first ball fastball. And Giles looks for it, got it, and pops myself up. Completely jam myself here. And this will most undoubtedly be the end of the game with one out left to go, down three outs, and will be the out of my day with Jacoby Ellsbury, unfortunately. Yep, as so the game ends, Carlos Correa, two for five, two homers, two runs batted in, will be the player of the game. Me is Jacoby Ellsbury, as you can see if you go to the game recap. Right here, went one for five with a run, two strikeouts. Not necessarily a great game, but I did score a run, which at the time was the tying run of the game, uh, back in the third inning. And I also picked up my first hit of the season. So yeah, this is just a quick synopsis of uh, Jacoby Ellsbury and how to use a position player or center fielder in a player lock mode. And uh, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, I really the hope you enjoyed this uh, gameplay. Heichel. And uh, I'm pretty sure there will be many more to come. So once again, guys, thank you so much. See you later.